At this time, I invite our three Thanksgivers to please come forward. For uh, about 35 years in three different churches, I've promoted a Thanksgivers Sunday where members of the congregation talk about what gratitude to God means to them. And in all three of those congregations, many people have said to me that that service, that particular flow of the year has been their most meaningful and most inspirational to hear fellow uh, church members talk about how faith has impacted their lives and allowed them to express gratitude to God. When Dan asked me to uh, speak today, I thought a great deal about what, what should I say, what people want to hear. Um, I've had so many blessings in my life, and uh, he's just reflect on on your blessings, and uh, this is what I'm trying to do today. I was born and raised in the small town of Paris, Kentucky, brought up in the First Methodist Church there. My parents and grandparents were very strong Christians. My mom, dad, two brothers, and grandparents had big influence on my life, and I miss mom and dad every day. We did not have a lot growing up, but we had each other. Back then, you didn't need much. My parents, my grandparents, probably the biggest influence on my life. Before my dad passed away, he told me, we can't leave you much. Uh, I said, Dad, but uh, he said, I can't leave you much, but the will to work hard. And I said, Dad, that's all we need. So I've always carried that with me wherever I go. I developed a love for sports during high school. I played basketball, football, and baseball. I had the opportunity to go to Transylvania University to play and work in the basketball program. While there, we played in four NCAA tournaments, and I wanted very much for my experiences to be a baseball and basketball coach and to teach. My four years of high school and the four years of Transylvania was such a big blessing in my life. After college and at the young age of 21, I got my start as a head baseball, basketball coach, and athletic director at MMI in Millsburg, Kentucky. From there, I went on to coach Bath County, and for the past 28 years, I've been the head baseball coach as well as head basketball coach and athletic director at Paris High School, where I graduated. It is a blessing to have been able to go home and to give back to the school that gave me so much when I was growing up. I'm now in my 38th year of teaching and coaching. Time has flown by, and all these years has been a blessing for me every day to go in the classroom, to hear basketballs bouncing in the gym, and to be on the baseball field in uniform hitting baseballs. I believe there is no greater call in life than to teach young people today. I've been blessed to have shared my life with so many great players, Parents, teachers, and administrators have been fortunate to meet and get to know so many famous coaches as well as players all over the state of Kentucky and in the United States. I thank God for the opportunities he's given me through coaching and have led a healthy life. My favorite basketball coach of all time is John Wooden. No one will ever match his record. He won uh, 10 national championships while at UCLA. He was a very humble man who gave all his credit to God for all his success. I met Coach Wooden back in 1976 at a coaching clinic and was able to sit down and talk with him. And uh, he first asked me, where are you from, kid? And I told him where, and he told me that he first started coaching at a small school as well. Before he left, he wrote me a note that said, Coach Barr, best wishes, John Wooden, UCLA. This is one of my most cherished possessions. Two years ago, I saw Coach Wooden again, talked with him, and took my picture with him. Two months later, he passed away, but that picture is one of the most priceless items that I had. I've had a very successful coaching career. I've won over 500 baseball games, close winning 500 basketball games, named the four high school hall of fames, won district regional titles, played in five all A state tournaments. Our baseball field at Paris High School is named after me. 
I am a very fortunate man. I owe all this to God and many individuals who work with me. I've always tried to, in some way to be a Christian. Being a coach and teacher, you face so many highs and lows. You run into so many walls, so many temptations. It can be a stressful job. I've been able to put a lot of players in college, see a lot of young people leave Paris and go on to become very responsible individuals. And on the other side of that, there are so many kids that are out there today that need help. I have two young men that I coach that are in prison today. They're on death row. And, uh, you know, I look back and say, what could I have done to help them? But uh, we try, try to help as many as we can, and sometimes we, we just can't save them all. But uh, I can pray, and I can send letters, and I go and visit them when I can. I was brought up by a strong mother and humble dad. They taught me right from wrong. It wasn't until 17 years ago that I realized the need to be more involved in the church. I needed this in my life. I needed a change. I needed to meet people, and this is when I became a trustee, then a deacon, then an elder. One uh, on Wednesdays, David Rennick used to have a little uh, sermon, a meal get together downstairs. And every Wednesday night, I'd come, and uh, there was Miss Evans and Miss Webb, and, I, and he did a series of where is God, where, who is God, what is God, when is God. And um, that really touched me. And uh, we'd have spaghetti and salad and cookies, and then we'd have a little sermon all for $3. And, and then get much better than that. <laughs> But uh, that, that uh, second uh, Presbyterian uh, church saved my life. I realized that all I have accomplished meant nothing if I did not have God in my life. Second Presbyterian, all the friends I've made, has been such a blessing to me. There's a quote from John Wooden that he said, wrote a book, said they call me coach. And this uh, I carry along with me as well. I'm not what I ought to be, not what I want to be, not what I'm going to be, but thank God I'm not what I used to be. Lastly, I'm most thankful to have three wonderful, healthy children. They've grown up and on their own. I have a very supportive wife. Many times they did without because I had a ball game or coach or was riding on a bus somewhere on a Friday night. Um, I owe all that I have to them, and I thank God for them every day of my life, as I love them very much, and these are the greatest blessings of my life. And right now, I've got a son that's flying from New York, coming in, so uh, he's on a plane, but pray for him. As I come to the end of my career, it causes me some anxiety to what the next chapter in my journey will be. I'm sure God will have one more race for me. I often tell my players before a big game, I know you're nervous and I know you're scared, but you can draw strength and courage from the Lord and know that he will help you and he will be with you wherever you are, wherever you go. I also tell them it's not bad to lose or get knocked down. It's what you do to get back on your feet and to get going again that counts. And I have another quote from Wooden's book, Reads, who can ask more of a man than giving all within his span? Giving all, it seems to me, is not so far from victory. So I can only tell you that I know what God has done for me, how he changed my life, and if you need help, you can always go to him in prayer. And I'll end with this quote. It's one of my dad's favorite, my old football coach, Grantland Rice says, when one great score comes to mark against your name, he marks not if you won or lost, but how you play the game. Being here today has been a blessing to my life. Thank you.